on a long-standing government espionage investigation. Federal officials this year have arrested or detained nearly 200 Israeli citizens suspected of belonging to a, quote, organized intelligence gathering operation. The Bush administration has deported most of those arrested after September 11th, although some are in custody under the new anti-terrorism law. Cameron also described an investigation into the possibility that an Israeli firm generated billing data that could be used for intelligence purposes and described concerns that the federal government's own wiretapping system may be vulnerable. Tonight, in part four of the series, we'll learn about the improbable roots of the probe, a drug case that went bad four years ago in L.A. Los Angeles, 1997. A major local, state, and federal drug investigation sours. The suspects? Israeli organized crime, with operations in New York, Miami, Las Vegas, Canada, Israel, and Egypt. The allegations? Cocaine and ecstasy trafficking, and sophisticated white-collar credit card and computer fraud. The problem? According to classified law enforcement documents obtained by Fox News, the bad guys had the cops' beepers, cell phones, even home phones under surveillance. Some who did get caught admitted to having hundreds of numbers and using them to avoid arrest. Quote, this compromised law enforcement communications between LAPD detectives and other assigned law enforcement officers working various aspects of the case. The organization discovered communications between organized crime intelligence division detectives, the FBI, and the Secret Service. Shock spread from the DEA to the FBI in Washington and then the CIA. An investigation of the problem, according to law enforcement documents, concluded, quote, the organization has apparent extensive access to database systems to identify pertinent personal and biographical information. When investigators tried to find out where the information might have come from, they looked at Amdocs, a publicly traded firm based in Israel. Amdocs generates billing data for virtually every call in America, and they do credit checks. The company denies any leaks, but investigators still fear that the firm's data is getting into the wrong hands. When investigators checked their own wiretapping system for leaks, they grew concerned about potential vulnerabilities in the computers that intercept, record, and store the wiretapped calls. A main contractor is Converse Infosys, which works closely with the Israeli government and under a special grant program is reimbursed for up to 50% of its research and development costs by Israel's Ministry of Industry and Trade. Asked this week about another sprawling investigation and the detention of 60 Israelis since September 11th, the Bush administration treated the questions like hot potatoes. I would just refer you to the Department of Justice with it. I'm not familiar with the report. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained. With respect to why they are being retain detained and the other aspects of, of your question, whether it's because they are in intelligence services or what they were doing, I will uh, defer to the Department of Justice and the FBI to answer that. Beyond the 60 apprehended or detained and many deported since September 11th, another group of 140 Israeli individuals have been arrested and detained in this year in what government documents describe as, quote, an organized intelligence gathering operation designed to, quote, penetrate government facilities. Most of those individuals said they had served in the Israeli military, which is compulsory there, but they also had, most of them, intelligence expertise and either worked for Amdocs or other companies in Israel that specialize in wiretapping. Earlier this week, the Israeli embassy here in Washington denied any spying against or in the United States. Tony. Carl, we've heard the comments from Ari Fleischer and Colin Powell. What are officials saying behind the scenes? Well, there's real pandemonium described at both the FBI, the DEA, and the INS. A lot of these problems have been well known to some investigators, many of whom have contributed to the reporting on this story. And what, is, what they say is happening is supervisors and management are now going back and collecting much of the information because there's tremendous pressure from top levels of all of those agencies to find out exactly what's going on. At the DEA and the FBI already, a variety of administrative reviews are underway in addition to the investigation of the phenomenon. They want to find out how it is that all this has come out as well as be very careful because of the explosive nature and very political ramifications of the story itself. Tony. All right, Carl, thanks.